some more Bob's meat though. And broccoli, you should remember, the broccoli are just too hard. Other than that, you know, don't have to try and true tradition. I need a box. And then, but one thing is that most things you on their you on their uh, rolls. They only give you one, so yeah. What other changes? They got new paints. But sometimes some things don't change. Okay. okay. Everybody just walk by. Oh, I see. So the broccoli comes with one flavor. Well, right. One density. One one degree of cooking. I mean. Right. No. Okay. I think there are, there are problems with uh, the whole process of getting it delivered to us and then steaming it like that because you never know who's going to order it. Yeah. And you constantly have to throw it out because it yeah. would stay good. Yeah. And there's kind of a risk of football in this. I think that's what you do. Well, you had to scram the room at it anyway. I couldn't eat it. Well, ma'am, I'm sorry that it was too hard for me. <laughs> I can certainly uh, empathize. Mm -hmm. um, can I make it up to you, maybe? Uh, do you want to have a sweet tooth? No, no, that's all right. That's okay. But well, Sandy has a sweet tooth. <laughs> <laughs> we, got, we got chocolate cakes here, which are pretty good. I don't like it when people can't eat food that they order. That really bothers me. Should I take chocolate cake home? Yeah, that'd be fine. That is the reason I told you, though. I, I told you because I thought maybe you could do something about it. Well, you know? um, it just depends. Uh, I, I can see your point. Yeah, I mean, it, definitely, I would prefer, I like my vegetables soft. Um, but uh, in terms of safety for the guests and the yeah. people come in here and you've heard of the jack and box and all that. They just want to keep the yeah. risk as low as possible. You want to make out the points for me? Sure, no problem. Okay. Uh, 3255 this tool. Okay. Um, I think I just got you here. That's kind of new. Mm -hmm. And they have to throw the whole thing out. Well, I'll tell you one thing. It would take a long time for that to get my shape. Yeah. <laughs> well, it doesn't take as long as you think. I think, you know, what, like what he said, what they're concerned about is the germs. Like the Jack in the Box restaurant chain, chain they have bought a, a bunch of botulism. And a lot of people, I don't know if they died or Not they just from, got... They didn't get botulism from the broccoli. No, I know they didn't. But <laughs> they got botulism I mean, the that's meat. what he was making reference to, so I was just using that. That's an example. Nat just wants her broccoli. Nat, do you think, Mrs. Arco, you think Nat should have some broccoli that's hard and so it breaks her teeth? <laughs> or or is, it reason, is it reasonable Nat wants some soft broccoli? Everybody, they got to the car. Everybody wants soft broccoli, you know? I think the guy has a point. I mean, Nat has a point. <laughs> well, yes, that's why we all chimed in. No, I guess some people like their vegetables crisp, but I don't. I, I know what some people do, but I don't either. Well, when you, you know, as you get older and you lose your teeth, you can't. Does it wouldn't make any difference. Now, that's true about the teeth. But even I had all my teeth and they were all in good, sharp What's he doing on the uh, shape. I still wouldn't like that wrong. No. Well, what do you, Miss Sarko, what do you think the song is? What? The song. There's nothing wrong with this song. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> We're not talking about... No, no, no. There's something wrong with the broccoli. She said she wouldn't know what the song is. But now, do you know what the song is? I can't see my watch. 
Oh, no, I don't. No, I mean... I don't even recognize this one. You want to look at your watch? Oh, I see. Wait, it's... Okay. Wait, wait. It's starting in the middle here. Let me start it. Did you want to look at your watch now? Oh, wait, 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 wait. She's saying she didn't recognize it. It's the same one you did recognize here. Let me see. How can I get the thing? I'll start on, I'll start on one again. Here. Here. You got to hear the beginning. Where Paco Bell, I mean, they, where the guy who wrote it lays the groundwork. Oh, is, it, is that another part of that? Yeah, it builds up. Uh, listen, now how about go... Well, he's an old dog. He's, he's an old dog. Oh, no, 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 no. Right. What? Oh, it's not yeah. on. It's not on. Just don't, don't worry yeah, about the red it, light, Helen. the red eye there. That's, that's it. No, <laughs> see, it's, look, it, when it's blinking, see what you see. He's Boomer for the, is it the baseball or football player? Boomer? I don't know. Mm. We're not very sports oriented. <laughs> and you left your kids home this time, huh? Well, they've gone different directions. Are you a pretty boy? Okay, Boomer. Boomer. Boy. How do you do this, anyway? Okay, here, Boomer. Boomer, here. And here's one for Murphy, then she won't be afraid of you. Okay, Murphy, here you go, Murphy. There you go. She's a good girl. <laughs> Did Murphy. you know I'm a great grandma? Really? No, we come, See, we come over to Helen's. No, it's the, only, it's the only dog I ever saw that ever snores. <laughs> it's the only dog I've ever seen fluff up his rug. Well, he's I know, Helen, but Helen... <laughs> you can hide on my shoulder, Helen. <laughs> so, Helen, you doing okay, then? What? You doing okay? Oh, yeah. Okay. Here, so, I mean, yeah, could I take, should I take a picture? Okay, I'm gonna talk about going shopping. Yeah, <laughs> at the store. Let me let me get up. <laughs> She's my friend. It's so nice is, to have Natalie nice across the hall. <laughs> yeah, but she really likes you yeah, here too. Because well, we, we get along. We're good for each other. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. we are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We got it. Yeah. Well, let me see now. You're Teresa. What, what? Teresa Schofield. Schofield, right? Yes, okay. That's right. Uh -huh. Okay. I okay. live across the hall from Natalie. All right, here's your house, and here's Nance. Yes, Natalie. Right there, okay. Uh -huh. oh, well, okay. okay, good. No, but it sounds like, oh, hello. Yeah, he came over here. Oh, he's coming over. He oh, came okay. over here to get his camera. Okay, so, yeah, get over get my camera. I don't, you know, we don't get over here right now. What do you think of, okay, no, Beverly, what do you think of this? <laughs> you know, I, don't my, okay, I don't need to be on film. For no, this is part of the movie. Okay. No, this is. Call a vacuum cleaner. Right. Okay. I'm selling a vacuum cleaner. Uh-huh. Okay. <laughs> axe murderer, and I'm coming in because the door was open, so. Action. <laughs> Hello. I'm here to pick up Nat. I'm your friendly axe murderer because the door was left open. <laughs> Are you ready, Nat? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. We're just being natural for the film, you know? Yeah, we might need yeah, a little... Oh, oh, okay. I, oh, I think you said you want to take the picture. Oh, I... <laughs> Is that what you meant? You're just going up there now. You stand by the door and point this at, at Helen. Because oh, we've got to get... We've got a, a, a document his monumental achievement. No, I'm not going to do that. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've been I watching the trouble. Oh, no. I'm already jamming and halfway into that, so... I'm glad you didn't whip them off and write. I just hope it isn't all cold. Well, we didn't know... I, mean, I, I have a tendency to jump the gun. Good old Esther's always. Okay. You look good. Oh, well, thanks. Okay. Is this too thick? What do you think of the manger scene? It's the manger scene. It's the smallest, the world's smallest manger scene. Oh, it is not. It's, Jesus is missing, I think, too. You know. <laughs> No, look like how many times we all get together like this. This is a rare. This is a yes. different combination oh, because we got. Combination. No, this is the first. This is the first time ever combination. Well, that's only the first of many. Isn't it? Yeah. Isn't it true, yeah. Helen? How many times have you been over here? This 
the first time I was well, uh, in the driveway, but I've never yeah, been in the house. I never come in the house. And, and Beverly, how many times have you been over here? This is my never. first time. Uh, I've never even been in the driveway. So. I know. No, <laughs> That's right. We can tell the way you caught, <laughs> the way you had to go all the way to Zimmerman before you realized yeah. you had time. That was you that shot past the house. Uh huh. <laughs> Johnny, while you're. Now, yeah. how many times have you been? How many times you been over here? Nan, uh -huh. how many times have you been over here? Oh, I've been over here a lot. Well, I mean like 10? Oh, yeah. Okay, but how many with Helen? Through the years. <laughs> oh, just Sandy, how many times have you been over here? Okay, so that's a good And how many times? Now, here's a good one. Okay, here's one. How many times have you been over here? <laughs> well, I don't know. But, okay, here's one. Nan, how many times have you had meatloaf over here? Uh, I think this is, it's, no, this is second time. Oh, okay. Okay, so this is a rare thing. This is monumental. Uh, this is uh, no question. Yeah, this I've is this is the very first time <laughs> this has ever occurred okay, in this in this. Hey, oh, look at that! Speaking oh, of never, yeah, speaking yeah, of a yeah, non-occurrence, yeah, <laughs> speak, no, speaking yeah. of something that doesn't occur, we're just talking about how yeah. unique. Everybody's saying. Forget the camera. There's nothing unique about this. If I was just going through all the unique features, like tell them. It's, it's unique also having the but, Christmas but tree up still. The unique aspect. Just when you see that. What's that? Oh. I'm sorry. Good. Well, the was 24. It was 24 hours getting ready, but. I've given a new meeting to Mount Stein. She asked me last night if I could be ready by 6.30, and I said no. But tonight, tonight I was. I mean, you were, she, she wanted to be ready by 6.30 last night? She was going to have to. He's going to have to. He's going to have to. He's going to be on time. That's a big one. We haven't stated which year that's going to be. You've done really well. Okay, maybe we should go around and get everybody's New Year resolution. We'll start with Beverly. What's your New Year's resolution? Uh, Take that camcorder and break it. <laughs> <laughs> Get going on that one. Oh, okay. Now that I'm on camera, let's, let's talk about this dishes. <laughs> okay. Now, what was that, Beverly? Yeah. Do you mean men can't do dishes? No, I can do. It's women's work. You know, please let us serve you. <laughs> <laughs> Is Jesus in there? Was baby Jesus? Yeah. In the manger. I think we've lost a few of the animals over the years, and I believe it might. All right, there's the baby. Here's the wise guys. So I, I was saying earlier, they're not there. And there's a few wise guys back there. Somehow we got four into the group, so I don't know how that happened. See, and here's, here's this, here's this person. Let's get a real close-up look at this guy right here. I can't quite, okay, he's in focus now. The king, the wise man. I, you know, unfortunately, it's just a statue. He can't say anything. Can he say anything? I look smarter if I don't say anything. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's right. Oh, we'd be videotaping. Okay, I'll get that. Uh, yeah. No, what was it? Go videotape that group in there. Yeah, they're doing fun. We should bring them out. This is just fun. Yeah. We should bring them out. Yeah, we're talking females. Why don't you have your son on set? What? Why don't you have your son on set? Why don't you have to use a woman who has kids, too? Oh, it's it's got that new super duper low lot. Thing. It doesn't. They got away from that. Yeah, it's 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 actually very very fancy, even though it's small. Yeah, I know everything is getting smaller and more, but more. Um, yeah, and he can't and he can't work on it. You know, like cars, just like cars. Never supposed to change the film, and I mean, never supposed to change anything. Don't change the batteries, for example. He, the, it's got the twenty. Well, I mean, the camera, for example, has a twenty-four hour battery. I mean, I remember when it used to be fifteen minutes and then one hour and two hours, and now they got the perma battery, and it's a chart rechargeable. You never have to recharge. I mean, you recharge it very seldom. The tape. Yeah, Helen was resting her eyes over there. Yeah, but, but I just want to say, yeah. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> Whose opinion is it? Take that, Dad, and get him. No, I mean, I forget what you were talking about. I wish you could get him, see? Ah, yes. That's we need to get you. Dad, you can look in there and see it. About what? Oh, yeah, yeah, I was saying that she was wondering how this worked. Oh, sir, we need to have the cam camera services shut off and other services. I was just going to get, I was going to get one of everybody saying goodbye. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. So, okay, Helen, it's good, it's good seeing you. Yeah.
You too. Bye-bye. <laughs> you, you look Good kind night. of tired, Helen. Are you tired? <laughs> Let's not uh, talk about that for the Okay, I mean, I mean, you don't look she, tired. She missed her evening nap, right? <laughs> right. Yeah, 11.37 a.m. Does anybody think? A.m.? Yes, that's what it says here. <laughs> All right, well, it's not. It's date and time is 1.33 a.m. This is not, this is incorrect. I see. This is absolutely correct. It has a watch on it, even though it has a hand waving. Miss Sharp, what do you think? Okay. Is it 11? Oh, there's another thing up there recording 2, 14, 54. It's 134. Uh-huh. Well, your, your, well, your clock is off a little bit, but don't worry but about that. Wrong. Okay, and what else? Right. What else we got here? We're watching the weather. Right. You can see clearly that the Doppler radar indicates there's no problem in Dayton. And the wise guys are still here. There's a few wise guys and over here. And one over here, and there's a cow right here. And so this thing is just about as good as it was a few years ago. Okay, and what's going on over no, here now? Nothing, absolutely nothing. We're trying to figure out a way that we should stay, go, go to Nance. Uh, Sandy said we're staying. And Mrs. Shawworker's tree is doing a good job here. It's getting smaller and smaller every year, and it's about uh, 18 inches high this year. We're going to see. I predict that next year it'll be about 16 inches high. It's got. Oh no, that's the count. We're counting only the limited part. There's about 20 bulbs on it. You know, we can count them. Like and that. I predict next year there'll be about a few less bulbs and a little shorter because it's getting smaller and smaller. Now, the other thing is no presence under the tree, Sandy. And one of the reasons is her inconsiderate daughter who didn't get her mother a single thing for her birthday. Sandy, don't hide. We noticed you under there. You're inconsiderate. You only have one mother left, probably the only person of her generation left in Dayton. And how many things did you get her for Christmas? I only have one mother left? Yes. How many mothers did I have before? That's exactly the point, Sandy. You only have one mother. And how are you treating her? Shabbily. It's in advance. Now, what do you have to say about that? Oh, she's treating you. About what? Oh, I think she's doing fine. But, Ms. Shawarka, may need I remind you of under the tree? What did she get you for Christmas? Oh, well, she got my dinner. But how many things have you gotten her for Christmas over the years? <laughs> and then she comes all the way up here today and empty-handed, <laughs> like she didn't think of in advance. my flowers. She got mm. those for me for yeah, I got those. Yeah, oh, okay. I remember I got those. It says, it's very clearly, Happy Christmas and Merry New Year's. I mean, something like that. From Johnny and Sandy in small letters. Yeah. And you do. What individual initiative did your daughter take? I fell down. <laughs> yes. And, well, no, that wasn't her either. Probably she just did it under guilt. Sandy, how do you feel the way you neglect and abuse your family? Will you stop dating? There's there they are, the, the neglected one and the neglector hiding. And well, you should hide. <laughs> and, and as well, you should hide back there. As you are the chief neglector of not only your mother, but a lot of other people too. It's just, just your mother can't hear this. See. Well, nothing. No, wait, what is that? You're holding your wrist? Your mother, and she let you slip today. Oh, no, she didn't. Yes, yeah, she did. No, she did. She should have been here to catch you. And yet, in her presence, she, you slipped on the floor. Dear, it's time to go. I didn't slip there, on the floor. She, there she is. I don't know how you can live with yourself. Will you come on? Yeah, you'd like me to come on. Okay, I'm leaving with the car. I'm going to stand here too long. <laughs> Bye. Dude, just like you do your mother. <laughs> She's been a big help. Oh, right. But look at your wrist. Look at that. Need I remind you? <laughs> What happened today? I got it for back. Yeah, right. And why, Sandy? Why won't you be back? And the reason. Because uh, uh, you have to get back. A lot you care, Sandy. I saw what you did to her arm. At least I, I diagnosed the problem as being uh, senile, sympathetic, uh, sympatho, um, what was that, what was it? Uh, sympathetic, Sandy, where are you? There's senality over there, too. Kevin. Yeah, senile, senile, uh, uh, dysautonomia. That's it. What are we doing now? Well, you're leaving your house. Now it's where you grew up, and you stab your mother. <laughs> and you stab your mother in the back. You have to come stir up and bait. It comes, it's a long tradition, the mouse is to bait. 
You should you should talk. You you neglect all your family except every two I, years. No, I don't, Jenny. Here I am. It's living proof that I don't neglect my family. No matter what you. You, the one who let your mother stop, fall. Stop it. I stop, it. Uh, stop it. You did not see it. You weren't even there. You were in bed. <laughs> <laughs> now, what was that that you were saying? I was in there taking, tending your mother's wrist. No, well, you, you were, were well, you certainly waking me up. Stop it. <laughs> in the middle of the night. My, first your bed is your mother, and then my aunt. Is there no end to what, you can, what you'll do, Sandy? Sandy. Next you'll ring the doorbell again. There's, there's Nat, where Nat lives. Here's upstairs. Everybody's sleeping. It's the usual. It's 1.56, almost 2 a.m. And Sandy's out here badgering Nat. It is, what's that hand with an F on it? So many little hands. One's up waving a no and one's with an F. 1.56. Okay, Nat still hasn't answered her door. And Nat says that we can knock on that window. I don't know whether to take her seriously about that. Nat is, of course, in the Christmas spirit. She hung her wreath here, and she has her flowers here. Probably her Christmas flowers. Unfortunately, they're not doing very well. Christmas flowers are having a little worse for the wear here. But they certainly will be okay. Unfortunately, no one to tend them. Nat didn't do that. And right here is the main culprit who baits <laughs> Sandy Sandy you can't escape the fact that you trip your mother down the stairs <laughs> I wouldn't do that to my aunt or her mother let alone, let alone my mother let alone my aunt <laughs> yeah there you go again 158 more times elapsed once again, all is quiet in Nat's apartment. Neighbors are, oh, the ducks are up. The what? Ducks. The ducks at Mallard, that Mallard apartments on Ma Mallard. Lane. One, again, 159. Sandy, once again, we see we're following the footsteps of the most, most inconsiderate person that ever lived. Oh, Nat. <laughs> how, how you doing? Here's the same guy. What? what are you going to do? We're not going tonight, Nat. Will you get that thing out of my face? Okay, I'll put it in Nat's face. Okay, so... Yeah, we were going to come over here, have a few drinks, break out the pure whiskey, and just go to bed. Do you want something to eat? Uh, I was thinking of having a ham and turkey sandwich. Is that what you were waiting on? I had a, uh, a meatloaf sandwich at my mom's house. <laughs> that was a good dinner. That was a good dinner. Oh, thank you. And here's Nat's tree. Now, actually, Nat, your tree is smaller than Mrs. Showerker's. It has on, it's about a foot high and has, you know, is it, is it true as you get older, your trees get smaller? I've heard that old rumor about Christmas trees. I well, guess. Nat is small, but it, you're older and done. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it's a foot high and it has about 20 bulbs. No, at least you saw the day. A lot you care. Nice. Sandy, you should see the way Sandy treated her mother. No, she, she gets very weak and she has to sit down. And she did that, like I said, she did that at our house. You want to turn it on? It's not on. She did it at our house about six months ago. And then uh, after she had been down there this last time, she came back. And I like how she always starts. I'm fine now. But I just want to let you know, this is what happened. And um, that's when I told her to go to the doctor and get tested. And he said that he thought it was a small TIA. Yeah, that she, was in she, did, she did tell me that. Well, yeah, um, so I'm not basing it. Yeah. It's actually on a, I think it's... But I think he might have been guessing for one thing. Sandy, it's seen all this on and on People, people uh, you know, obviously she didn't have a TIA because she painted, she blacked it out. She well, had it's, a it's a TIA. No. TIAs usually don't leave any, they leave a focal symptom like, you know, slurred speech or something. Well, then, then, then she actually had a global. Well, they told me that that one I had was a TIA. 
Well, they were wrong with you too. No, she has a global cerebral uh, loss of cerebral blood flow. You know, she kind of just feels woozy. Her blood pressure drops, and she she gets woozy. She she doesn't she doesn't uh, get dizzy. She actually sort of blacks out. You know, she just you know, and then she's on the floor. Yeah. And Sandy tries to pick her up, and makes it worse. That was today. She but, had she had one today. But I think I mean she has a disorder. It's very simple to fix. I'll I'll have to send her the right medicine. I'm not sure what it is. Is there, which glasses do you have to put ice in your? Huh? Which, a which big you, tall glass. Oh, the, the, uh, Where are your big glasses? You want beer or what? Uh, for the beer, you know, the ice with the beer. Oh, beer. well, if you get one of the tall ones. Yeah. Okay, this is. That, this is big enough for a beer. But yeah. I'm but this is Johnny one. has that. Uh, this is one for ice and beer. That's, that's have a huge glass. Yeah, because they've got to put some ice in the beer. Whatever huge glass you have. Since when do you put ice in beer? Oh, I always do. It defoams it. You know, then you can drink more. <laughs> yeah, you don't want all that foam. Yeah, him and, uh, Jimmy and him, they have this down to a science now. I have I have tonight. Oh, really? Well, did, did I do that last night? I thought I, I was pretty sure I did the same thing last night. Oh, yeah, exactly. Just a little, actually. I just need to be honest with you. But anyway, you know, what the hell do you think? It's not like seeing anybody, you know, but what do you think of that really situation? You know, you're wise and been around a long time. I, I have no, I have no, uh, we're only about half, Beverly's only about halfway there. I'm not, she's not even halfway. What do you think about Beverly? Thank you, God. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
somebody who doesn't drink. I just have to drink a particular thing. And by the way, what? Sorry. Do I have to have to do it for hours on end here? Here you go. Thank you, Matt. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. Sure, just read off the hand. Sure, I'll take some potion. Well, that, that, should, be, that should probably be a... Now, I'm going to have a drink and sit over here and discuss the situation. <coughs> what to do about Beverly? I think Beverly should, for one, should go back into the hit business. When did, now, they, you, know, the, you know, the thing is, is I think she should worry about... Uh, she, you know, it takes about a, six months a year to get over these kind of things that she's had. Mm -hmm. But after that, she should get hit this. It's happening slowly, right? Oh, Johnny, you can't tell how long. I, boy, it took me forever. I never do get over this. And you just keep on going now, you know. What else can you do? But is Beverly going? Oh, yeah. You see? I think it would be a lot better. If she uh, liked what she did at work, mm. you know, if she could. Well, that's true. If she had a good job, then she could just go back to work and. You know, that's where you spend most of your time. Yeah, I know. I sure do. Well, I don't know what the problem is at work. How could she have a job she doesn't like? I mean, you know. I didn't know she's never liked it. I know what she does, really. I don't know either. She has a pretty good job, I think. She works for the other what, what does she do? I really don't know. But I think she has something to do. No, she doesn't. I really don't know. No, I think the people around her are bad. I mean, you know, she seems like she's gotten a little hard in that life, you know. Uh -huh. She's got a little hard in that life. Yeah, she's cynical. Yeah, cynical. Yeah. Uh -huh. I think she got that way with the hospitals. Well, uh, Helen has always been that way. Helen? Yeah. But Helen doesn't seem very cynical to me. Well, she is. <laughs> you, you, can't, you can't tell about people. But I mean, it's not like they don't know her. Uh, she, uh, she sings all about him. Uh, you know, the way Bev is about doctors. Well, Helen's that way, too. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. Maybe she got her mother. Huh? I mean, maybe she got her mother. You know, like she, she maybe sang it before, you know, kind of got passed down. I wasn't around when Helen was cynical, but, you know, you know what I mean? They kind of, you kind of take on the face of your mother, I think, or your dad or somebody, you know. Yeah, well, neither was that way. Yeah, I wasn't like that. No, no. So about, how was Helen cynical? I didn't know she just, uh, I would put it this way. She likes animals more than she likes people. Helen? Mm-hmm. Hmm. Except the family, of course. Means strangers or other people. <laughs> you heard her tonight when she said she was her mom's student. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, I know she's a mouse. She's kind of a Schaeferized guy. <laughs> well, she never sees being a mouse. No, well, right. You mean mouses are all? No, I, I don't know what it is. They can tell them being a mouse can do no wrong. I, I don't quite understand it. Really? Oh, yeah. Tell them being a mouse can do no wrong? Uh-huh. Hmm. You mean so? But I, I, don't, I, I guess I never thought about like that. I mean, one thing, one thing Beverly said was, they, you know, daddy, you know, daddy, Toby, you know, daddy. She was saying that daddy, one thing I thought was kind of interesting, he said that he was uh, always saying something, he was wise. You know, we were talking about wisdom. Your father? Yeah. Uh -oh. 
and, and Beverly said, yeah, like your dad. He was, he was, a, he was a, like the fountain of wisdom. That's what Beverly thought of him. And of course, I think that way too, but you know, um, you know, I just, you know, you don't think anybody else would think somebody else's father. But is well, it? yeah, well, you're, Helen really, she really almost worshipped both her brothers, you oh, know. She, oh, really? Oh, yes, yeah, she thought they were. She and she's from daddy? Uh -huh, yeah, and she tried, everything they tried, she tried to do, you know. Helen really, yeah. I remember the time that she took the dryer apart. It was broken. But she got the instructions and took it apart and couldn't get it back together again. So she How called, did that? Yeah. So she called your father. And I remember your father said when he hung up the phone, he just shook his head. I want you to do something for me. What is that? Oh, that's something like that. That's something. We picked it up at the Hampton Inn. Oh. It says, life's all over 50. Life's all 50. The special benefit for guests 50 and over. You know, I just saw it and I said, hey, you finally get in on this thing. Oh. So actually, actually, I already asked for this kind. Yeah, yeah, one. No. I asked, I, then I checked in and said, do we want the discount? And they said, hey, here's another thing we want. Because we're 50. Oh, yeah. You want to get the address for me? The address? It's just 205. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Two. Oh, two. Five. Five. Is that Hemlock? Mm-hmm. Hemlock. Drive. McMurray. Uh -huh. McMurray. Uh-huh. Yeah, MC. Right. <coughs> R. Uh, A Y. Uh, A Y. Okay, and is it? One five three one seven. Okay, I want to write her in those. Oh, yeah. I mean, you can you can read that? Um. Yeah. I mean, that's... Yeah, yeah. Because the letters, they're only an inch high. Uh-huh. I mean, you know, they're not like monstrous letters. No, but they're black and white. Now, I can't um, look at this and read it off, you know. Mm -hmm. I have to look at it. In other words, my vision is not all over. Where is it? Where is it? Uh, temporal, in, inside or outside? Now, I mean, to the, well, for instance, I can see the two uh -huh. and the zero real well. Then I have to kind of move over. Is that is that your left eye you're using? I don't know what to do. My left eye is my bad eye. Oh, really? You know, it's the one that's always been bad. But you were looking at it kind of with your left eye. But you, you, so you're seeing out of this eye. Um, I really don't know which eye I'm seeing out of. I assume it's this eye. Well, can you because cover? Because I still have more vision in this one. But at this one, it, I don't know whether, you know, I never did ask them. I think uh, that, um, whatever you call that, you know, that retina business. Senile macular? Uh, yeah. Or retinal yeah. degeneration? Yeah. I think it's in this eye. And that was always my good eye. But I still have a cataract on this side. But there's no point in taking it off because I can't see out of it anyway. That's what I was thinking. I mean, if you're good in the right eye, then you're really using your right. You know, that's, it's, you must see out of the medial part of the right eye. It, it looks like whatever it is, if something's covered up and I can't focus, you know. Uh -huh. Does this help, this, this thing here? A little bit, yeah. Uh, just, just a little bit, yeah. I guess it helped me. I mean, I don't have nearly a problem, but I just have a little bit of trouble reading. But it would be bad not being able to read fast. Well, it's bad not being able to read. Well, I mean, you, yeah, but not being able to read 
to me. Okay, if you want to look at, at on the seas in this book. The seas? Yeah. Yeah, am I in the seas? Yeah. Yeah, and there's, no, but you're in the apps. Okay, C back here. Okay. C. It, it gets the name coin. C-O-Y-N-E. We got a lot of names in here. Yeah. But, uh, oops. Colin? No, that's not it. Coin, C O Y N E. Oh, yeah, I see. It's right on top. Oh, wait a minute. I got an ad here. That's in Pennsylvania. I, I too. want that phone number. It's in Trafford, right? Trafford, yeah, yeah. Just your phone number. I have her address. <coughs> I think I have her phone number written down. Yeah, you got a lot of things here, but let me see. Let me look here. Oh, here it is. Okay. Uh, four, is it 412 373 06? Wait a minute. 373 0 0692. 41, did I say it right? 41. Wait, wait, I'll repeat it. 412. Yeah. 3. Uh, three Seven. Three. Let's see, I have trouble with what, what they do with this. Oh, there it is. Three, seven, three. Zero, six, nine, two. Yeah, that's okay. it. Yeah. We got a bunch of numbers like Tom, 1956, Joan, 1958. Somebody, John, 1962, Danny, 1968. <laughs> and wedding, the, uh, I guess, wedding date. I think I have, uh, don't I have her kids' names after? Yeah, Tom, Joan, I guess it's, maybe it's been her Oh, what's your little girl's name, Joan? Mm-hmm. Okay. She's not a little girl anymore. Well, this right, you have 1958, is that when she was born? Uh, yeah. So it says Joan, and then it's 1958. Joan was born in 58. No, she was married in 55. Oh, but she, she's June's age. Oh, yeah. Well, she was born. I mean, you have Joan, and then the birthday. Yeah, she's not yeah. a little girl anymore. Because she's born. But well, she's just she's just about 10 years younger than me. Yeah, now, what are the other names? There's a Tom, and a Joan, and a John. What's the other one's name? I think. Uh, Danny. Danny, okay. Those are the four kids, right? 56, yeah. 58, 62, and 68. Oh, I have that all written down. Okay. Mm -hmm. I couldn't think of that little girl's name. It must be Joan. Yeah. She's, she's, she's one year, she's 11 years younger than me. She's, she's going to be old. She's so yeah. young, she's going to hit the big 4 0 next year. Yeah. <laughs> she and her husband both work for Pittsburgh Life. Joan? No, Marilyn. Oh, you mean Joan's parents? Yeah, right. Does Pittsburgh Plate Glass still in existence? I, I mean, I don't hear much about them. Uh huh? They, are they still working? I mean, Pittsburgh Plate Glass still producing glass or what? Well, as far as I know, they are. They're, uh, they do other things besides glass now. They're into everything. Yeah, people usually like the diversity. Mm -hmm. Are they still in Pittsburgh? Mm -hmm. Main office in Pittsburgh. Yeah. Yeah, they have a beautiful all glass building there now. <laughs> well, I guess so. That would be very good if they have alcohol and aluminum all over. <laughs> <laughs> Pittsburgh, I saw some old, on the video film I saw the other night, I saw when I was in Pittsburgh. Uh, you know, I mean, it was about 20 years ago. When I was uh, taking an interview for a job, uh, I guess intern residency, because uh, one of the places I was considering was Pittsburgh. Mm. There were two. There was two universities I remember kind of. Uh, I think Pittsburgh Presbyterian, and then uh, Monte, but, but, yeah, Montefiore. But, you know about Montefiore? Yeah, yeah, Montefiore, yeah. And, and those two, you know, they're connected, and you know, the, the Training program. Uh, the Presbyterian is a university hospital, right. I think, yeah. Pittsburgh Presbyterian in Montefiore is kind of like a private hospital. Yeah. And so I would be working at both of those. You know, yeah. that was a program. When was this? 
about 20 years ago. That's it was on that video about the same time Johnny was born. That's how I know it was 20 years ago. <laughs> you know, oh, you mean you mean you were, you were going to intern there? Yeah. Oh. Either there or I went to, on the video it showed me there in Chicago, and then Ohio State. Uh, no, then Bowman Gray, and the, you know a few other places. But, but, but I, just the video. Well, the thing about the video was it had me in the Fort Pitt tunnel. And it showed, yeah. I, I said. And here we are, in, you know, I remember in the bar, here we are in the Fort Pitt Tunnel. It looks like all, I remember saying, all, it looks like all Pittsburgh has to squeeze out to this Fort Pitt Tunnel <laughs> every day yeah. because it was all jammed up. I left the, yeah. you know, the interview was over around 4.30 or 5, and I was out with the work traffic leaving. Yeah, Fort Pitt Tunnel, that's the one that goes over to South Hills. Yeah. You know, the way Dorothy lived. Well, maybe I was hidden in that way for some reason. They have, uh huh? I mean, I might have been going over to see somebody. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you yeah. know, just since I was in town. Yeah. But um, we went to the Fort Pitt Tunnel, and then I guess there's all those bridges, though. Oh, yeah, bridges and tunnels. There was a, um, when I was little, uh, the only way you could get to, uh, uh, you had Mount Lebanon and Brookline and Dormont. Dormont. Now, where, who lived in Dormont? Nancy did. Oh, yeah, Dormont. I remember that. Yeah. Because, you know, everybody says it differently. Dormont. I mean, I mean, you know, door. Dormont. D-O-R-M-O-N-T. But people say it differently in Pittsburgh. Yeah. You know, um, I had uh, uh, Teresa, yeah, a friend of hers from Michigan was here. And, uh, Teresa invited me and some other woman that lives here for dinner, you know, when she was here. And that woman uh, knew that I was from Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. She said I had an accent. Yeah. I never, I, I think only one other person ever told me that. Well, you kind of have a Pittsburgh accent, but you're, you kind of, you, you haven't changed over the years, I don't think. You always sound the same. But, uh... I didn't know that people in Pittsburgh had an accent. Oh, yeah. Now, in, uh, it's around, uh... Dorothy really had an accent. Her accent was strong. And mother's wasn't very strong. And yours is kind of halfway in between. Oh. Uh, but Dorothy, and I... I do you mean when you said Dormont? I remember how Nancy used to say Dormont. I think I remember. Yeah. You know, or... Yeah, but it was really in, in that group. Well, you know, your group. Yeah. <laughs> you know, the group was your group. You know, like Dorothy and everybody over there. And they, even Dorothy, they'd say Dorothy a special way. Yeah. You know, they put they, something like Dorothy, you know, something real sort of a beginning. They drag out the beginning. Okay. Southerners drag out the end of the word. But, you know, they, yeah. And it's just a little, it's a little thing. But, you know, it, it's, uh, it's pretty clear. Mm -hmm. I kind of like the Pittsburgh accent. Kind of cute little accent. Well, they have, you know, that's that Middle Atlantic accent. And they say that is the, uh, uh, the least, uh, I, should I say noticeable, or I don't know the right word. But it, it, you can't, now, now you can almost tell immediately if somebody's from Texas. Yeah, or from Oklahoma. And even Kansas. Yeah. You know. Um, or especially or Brooklyn. Oh, yeah. Now, Teresa's from New York. Right, you can tell that right, you, uh, right <laughs> away. As soon as she spoke, I knew that. Uh, and then, of course, the South. Yeah. But I, even, I don't think that is even that way so much anymore. Well, it is, if you live there. It is. And even in the South, uh, you know, North Carolina is different from Say Alabama. Oh yeah, yeah. You know, know, you know, you've been in North Carolina, but you know, it's, it's, it's colloquialism. You know, I, I can't quite figure out how that happens. Yeah. Well, people definitely, it's phrase. You know, the other thing is phrases that people use. For example, uh, you know, like from Johnny. You know, the people who come over from Georgia. You know, uh, Gwen and Mr. And Mrs. Gwen. I mean, Gwen and Kathy. Um, What's the wait, wait. Those yeah. those people from from, uh, from the south, there, you know, the, the Johnny's friends, they come up. They have a special. They kind of have a funny accent. 
They Johnny has a funny way of saying things. Johnny Jr. Yeah. The way he says things like uh, they were commenting on, like not you know, but what was the thing I use? I use this as it were. You know, I think I, yeah. I think something that I started to say. You know, I remember because I said in the way you know, as it were. You know, well, this is what we ought to do. Or I explained something and I said as it were on the end of it, yeah. and they didn't know what that meant. And I don't quite know what it means either. It's just so, yeah, well, yeah, as it were. Uh, <laughs> well, uh, it, you're right. You really can't say it. You know what it means yourself. It's sort of emphasis on uh, what you're talking about. Yeah, I don't, I don't know where I picked that from, but I know I use it. Yeah. And Johnny uses it, and they don't know what it means. And they were saying, what is as it were? Yeah, yeah. And he was saying, he was saying it's a modifier. He he crafts like a diagram, but real quick. But you know. Yeah. Feel better? Yes, thank you. You know, I had to rush up because you went out of bed at the early hour of three a.m. or three, 3 p.m. And I had to rush over your house, so I I, I didn't take a shower today. Sorry. But I did there. And I didn't get fully wet, but got wet enough. But we were just talking about Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. Well, really, tomorrow you have to drive straight through, huh? Yeah. yeah. But it's going to be about okay, you know, nine hours. It's supposed to be nice. Yeah. Yeah, we'll, maybe, we'll put the Maybe on. rain, maybe showers, but... We can handle that. It's the ice, snow, and cold that we can't... We have the Bach trumpet concerto. I have the two CDs. Like you said, oh, yep, I mean, uh, Beverly knew the problem. Who? Beverly. Knew what problem? Well... I mean, you know, when he got, when he got... You know, I think maybe Bev will get married again. I hope she does. I think she probably will. Too, I would never tell her that, but... Uh, <laughs> some guy, some guy will probably see some good qualities in her. And they're good, good qualities. She's got a lot of good qualities. Yeah, but I mean, I mean, she's smart. The many good qualities in Bev. She's got a real good sense of humor. But I was, I was kind of that Bev was kind of clever. And, yeah, like I say, got a good sense of humor. I mean, I think that she'd be a fine person. Maybe. Oh, Bev is, is smart. And works yeah, hard. Yeah. I mean, but the good sense of humor, I think. Yeah. But too bad she had to get cynical. Well, I think, I think it only she liked her job and the people she worked with. It would help. But you know, it's bad. It's terrible not to like your job. You spend most of your time there. Yeah, it is a bad thing. I mean, like I said, I got a situation there. I, I do like what I do, but I just don't like. There's, it's starting to be. It's starting to be tipped at the balance. You know, like at first it was pretty good. Basically, okay. The problem is, I start. I went there about ten years ago because of this guy Bill Koopman, who was the head of rheumatology, and he he's still there. I mean, he left Cleveland, but he went to be the head of medicine. What do you mean you went there ten years ago? You've been there more than ten years, haven't you? Well, ten and a half. Ten and a half. I went there in August of '87. Oh, that's right. You went there. Uh, you went there the year your mother was in the hospital. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when she was in the hospital, you were still in uh, Maryland. Maryland, yeah. yeah. Rocky River, wasn't it? Rock, yeah. Rock, yeah, Rocky. Uh, we lived in Rockville. Rockville. On, on well, it wasn't Rock, Rocky Ridge. Rocky no, River. No, no. Wait a minute. It was Schoolkill. We lived on. Yeah, but the, she sounds in the river. There was a river. What's that river? Rocky. Rock, Rocky. What river? Where? There is a rocky river in Maryland. Yeah, the river. You know, because there's a rock. She's thinking of the uh, pipe, uh, the little, the track. You know, what, what's it called? I'm really in mean, Rockville, but what's, what's that? What's that path and, and park? Oh, I, oh yeah, rock. I think it is. It's rock. Rock Creek. Creek. It's rock Creek. Rock Creek Parkway and Rock Creek Park. That goes down through D.C. It's pretty yeah, nice. What was the name of the city? Rockville. 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 But Rock Creek. Rock Creek Parkway. It wasn't really like a parkway like you think of it. It's just a two-lane road, but it was. It went through the park. And it was just a nice way to go to work. It'd go one block down, get on a Rock Creek Park and make a little windy road. It wasn't very much traffic, especially when you go in on the highway. You know, sometimes I had to be there at 8 o'clock. And then, uh, how long were you there? Five years. Five years in one month, actually. Yeah. Which is a long time, you know. Most people are there three or four years, 
or five years. But most people, most people who don't who leave aren't there longer than five years. But I, I stay another month. I mean, another yeah, one month. So I've been five years. One month. No, no. Okay. Don't be as sick in the mouth. I know. Well, it was kind of an eventful day, kind Why? Unnerved me. I don't know. You want some cheese and crackers? I'm fine, thanks, man. I've been eating. You said, could you make me a turkey sandwich? <laughs> I'll make you another one if you. Oh, that's right. Unless yeah. you want to have just throws the turkey all over the floor. <laughs> Thank you very much for here. Well, but first I stomp on it real hard, and then I put it on. No, no, you throw I it on. I tenderize it with my feet first. You throw it on the floor, then you step on it. I said I have to tenderize it with my feet. But, Nan, you know, one thing is... Thank you, Nan. See, I had a... I, I, when I started working there, when I was in NIH, I didn't really want to move down south. And everybody told me not to do it, but I did it anyway. But the thing is, because Koopman convinced me and said it would be great, and it really was. But Koopman stopped about two years ago being the head of the division. I'm not going to blame anything, Koopman. I know I'm a, I'm, I should be on my own now. But <clears throat> you need someone like that, you know? You, you need can't some, respect your boss, then. You, you need somebody to look up to. Now they got this Well, you and Jimmy both told me the same thing. You both liked it there because you weren't harassed. Well, that's true, and it's still true. But... You know, so we do what we want, but the problem is, is that, I don't know, I just, they got a new guy in the head of the division, so I just, I don't know, I just, he's, he's, he's not there, but he's not good, he's just neutral. Now, I'm sort of in, I'm sort of, you know, like you say, like Jimmy says, I'm sort of independent of all that, but it just is, a, it just takes the fun out of it, having, not just being totally alone. I mean, I was before, totally sort of on my own there. And I guess I just got to figure out what to do. I got to figure out, I don't want to go just become mediocre. I mean, I want to be energetic and cutting edge. I mean, that's what I always want to do. I want to be on the top. You know, you're, not, you're not thinking about leaving, are you? Yeah, I am. Oh, are you? Mostly, okay, I don't have a big pool to go in there. But before, you know, I've, I've, I've considered it before. But I said, no, I like it here, and there's reasons for me to stay. The reasons to stay are getting fewer and fewer. So now all I have to do is have a good reason to leave, and I think I would. Have you put out any feelers? Yeah. There's a lot of places that need a head of rheumatology. That would be my next step up, you know, as a head of a rheumatology division. There's, there's about ten places. I thought you were that now. No. Oh. What are you? I'm just a professor of medicine. Uh -huh. Professor of medicine. Oh. In the rheumatology department. I'm about as high as you can go, you know. Without being division head. Well, yeah, yeah. I mean, and that has its drawbacks. The other thing I'm really considering very seriously is, is which I did already actually, but starting my own company with a special emphasis on, on certain things that I'm good at. And I, that is probably what I will do. And that'll be a different, a different thing for me. I'll probably stay at the university for one or two more years while I develop and, and incubate this thing. And then I will be the head of a company. And I'll right, get, right there in Birmingham? Well, initially. And then I'll go somewhere else. Good night, Hey, Good Jenny, don't go anywhere. I'm sorry, I'm no. tired. No, Jenny. I know I'm tired. You and Nan are talking. <laughs> Get over there. I'm tired. Here, sit down. Sit I down. don't know. I don't know. Oh, I'll tell you what, Johnny. Promise her that you'll. Yeah, I'll be right. You'll get no, it. I'll tell you what. You'll get it in right after you eat. I'll go. I'll let it be right after you eat. It's okay. You can't see him drinking that beer. Well, that's fine. Sam, Sam, what's more? Sam, Sam. Just get over there. Sam, here. Put it here. No, here. Here, here's a pillow. Get over there. Sandy, you're not going to be, you're not going to be here now. Here. Now, Sandy's got, I mean, Nat's got her imperial whiskey to drink. Now, look, one thing you got to realize is people don't want to drink alone. Right, Nat? They don't want to sit here and drink whiskey and just get tired. They like this, like this kind of, kind of 
you know, discuss things. I'll just go over on the couch. No. I can hear everything fine. Sandy, you, not only do you have to sit there, but you've got to say something. So you got to say something. You have to drink. Yeah, well, you, yeah your problem is you're already drinking. Listen, Sandy, as soon as she finishes this sandwich, Sandy, we have to get it. Yeah, do you have any Imperial whiskey for Sandy? It's really good, Sandy. Well, you could, no, it I don't like this. It is as smooth this whiskey I ever discovered. I should, you know what, I should have gotten her some wine. Pina Colada. I was, I had, I thought about too late in getting the pina colada. We saw it at the, you know, you know, know, Johnny, Johnny, was trying, trying, yeah, Johnny was trying to get that last night. But yeah. I didn't even remember until it was like 10 to 12 tonight. So. Well, I should, I should remember that. I didn't even think about it. Sandy, don't be rude to Nan. I'm remember. not, stop it. I saw you Why did you go back on to your story about leaving your own company? Yeah, but the thing is, this is going to be a new thing. But it's like, it's like uh, Helen, I mean, Helen, Beverly. You know, is that you only live once, you gotta make the most out of life. I feel like I've sort of optimized what I can do. I mean, I can see, I can write grants and get papers and make discoveries and be, be big and be reasonably good, I mean, not good, very good in academic medicine. All right, now that's out of the way. Now I gotta do something else. Hey! <laughs> Stop it! No, you're not going to kick me back. Stop. I'm going to hit you with something. Quit. Stop. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Sandy, look, you're being, look, you're being rude to your aunt. Look, I did get on to you, and you were sitting there in the chair watching the boob tube. That was different. It was a good movie on it. I was born to tears over that one. Really? Yes. Kirk Douglas? I don't, I didn't like a boxing film. I didn't either. But it had nothing to do with boxing. It had to do with the character, the character of winning. Fighting all the odds and coming up. Something I can identify with. Okay, well, I'm going to sneak up right ahead. Well, okay, Nan. Nan won't stab me in the back. Okay, Nan, so what do you think? What do I think about what? About starting over. Oh, Johnny, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even hazard to go over and do something you have to make up around around mine. I mean, I don't want to just keep going the way I'm going. Because yeah. it just looks like it's not going to lead to any. Oh, I, the, the thing that here again, hand open for you, just close it off here. I'll, I'll get my stuff here. It's like it's a difficult one of the difficult times. <laughs> Getting myself to say this is real complicated. And then, you know, are you saving that turkey? Where did she get? Right she's here, I'm on your, your sofa. Let me ask you that. I know you're saving that turkey for all your other guests, but can I get a little more on there? Like, right like, down the bottom. I know, but I like that turkey. Oh, okay. One thing about Johnny, Nan, is he's never shy about his opinions. That's when he good, goes. but I know that. <laughs> but Nan looks like she was going to save this turkey for Jimmy coming through or something like that. But he, you know, he might not come through for a while. You know the way Jimmy is. He, he, he can't come. He says he's coming. Next thing you know, he calls up and says, there's, a little, more, there's too much turbulence and he can't make it. We'll get you some more turkey, Nan. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking you run out of turkey, and then you won't have any. You want some more in hand? No, not, not, not. Put some more ham on We it. actually do have a lot. No, okay. Here's what else. No, we don't have it. Now the ratio is all piled up. Oh, too much turkey now. Okay. Thank you. I like the turkey, though. And, you know, by the way, that turkey, for five, I don't know, you can't see very well, but when they take it in, I can see that they can take advantage of it there. But the ham, I mean, the turkey, this turkey is, let's see here, three ninety nine a pound. Where the stuff you wanted, which was all red and looked beat up, and somebody kicked it around the, the phenos, was five ninety five a pound. And I, I think, think it you was four ninety nine. I think as you get the, no. That wasn't. No, no, I wanted that other one because it was smoked. Yeah, but the thing is, this is better. The smoke stuff is all red inside, and that's it. You probably get some bird flu from it. <laughs> this this turkey is good. Just in okay. case you didn't have enough to worry about now. You really get your bird flu now. Yeah, you don't want that. The last thing you need is bird I mean, you say it takes you a couple months to get over cold. Why don't you wait until you get that Hong Kong bird flu? You know, if I get bit, that'll be the, the end. I and don't forget where I want to be buried. And don't forget to let Chuck know. Actually, I don't know where you want to go. Don't forget. I, mean, I don't know. In wants... Pittsburgh, up by your parents? Yes, yeah, right up to Charlie. I don't know. Charlie. I don't know if we should get into this. The grave is already marked. My name is on it. But aren't your parents also there? No, they're in another part. Oh, okay. 
What cemetery is it? I mean, you know. Unionville. Unionville. Does anybody else know? Chuck knows. I told Jimmy. Jim knows. You don't want to, yeah, you got to spread that walk. You got to make that clear. Yeah, I'm telling you, that's clear. Unionville Cemetery. Yeah, right. Where is that located next to? It's in Pittsburgh. Well, okay, it's on yeah. the north side. Actually, it's, it's only a short distance from where we lived. Oh, really? You mean, mm -hmm. you mean your house on, what's the name of that street? Uh, Metropolitan. Is that, is yeah. that where Emma was and so forth? Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, Emma, yeah. You remember Emma? Yeah, Emma was, like I said, I thought Emma was a cleaning yeah. lady. <laughs> Just like Pam thought that you were my mother and mother was the cleaning lady, or whatever. But um, I didn't know who Emma was. I know she had bad osteoporosis because she had that bad, she, she was about, took about a 90 degree angle about halfway up her thoracic spine. You know, she was, you know, she was bent over. Oh, yeah, yeah. She had bad osteoporosis. Where did Emma, where did Emma go? Uh, she died. No, I mean, I mean after that. Oh, uh, where's she buried? Yeah. It's not too far from where Charlie is. Oh, she's in Union Cemetery. Yeah, we, we didn't even have a, uh, uh, a lot when Charlie died. There was only one left in our family when, and, uh, I did take that one because of Dorothy. Dorothy wanted it. Is 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 Dorothy dead? Uh huh. Dorothy's not dead, is she? Oh yeah, Dorothy died two years ago. Okay. I knew she was sick, and I thought she might have got close to dying. She died uh, right before I moved here. She died September twenty third of that year. Uh -huh. I told you about you for. No, I, I remember you told me. I remember. I remember. Some of the goings on, but I, you know, the deaths about the end were so thick and heavy that I couldn't, I couldn't keep track of it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just bad when everybody's dying all once. Yeah. Well, you're not dying for around that. You don't have to worry about that. But we'll keep, we'll, 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 we'll definitely get you in the right place there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I told everybody, so everybody knows. So they know the question. And Charlie, when did Charlie go? I, I, I kind of remember. 1962. 47, 57, yeah. I remember we were about 15. Yeah. So they remember me and Jim, Jimmy and Brian, and you probably don't know, we, we were camping out in the clubhouse. You know? Yeah. My mother and daddy were coming over to your house. Yeah. And they, you know, we were wondering what the deal was, and they said Charlie died. Oh, you were in the clubhouse that night? Yeah. <coughs> I used to hear you up there at night when I had the windows open. <coughs> yeah. Probably all night long. Yeah, I used to play cards here. Yeah, yeah, we were having a good time. <laughs> Every now and you probably heard a window busting. Bust Somebody who crosses in the day, <laughs> crosses up in the day, and we had to go. They always say, but I don't know why we did that. I'll never forget when your father took that down. He took it down and we weren't looking. Because <laughs> I didn't want it to come down. Uh, well, well I, I don't think he wanted it to come down either. It was kind of a... Why did you take it down? I didn't know. You know, after you left, that little girl across the street, you know those people that lived in that ranch house? I can't remember their name. Um, you, mean, you mean the funeral? I mean, not the funeral, but the plots? The pl no, no, that, that was on the same side of the street. This was on the other side. You remember where, right across the street, um, was. Um, Just from you. Right? Uh -huh. It was a house, Caddy Corners. It was a red brick ranch house. From across the cutting corner from us? Uh, yeah. You mean like where, I mean, you know, I don't know. Next, next to mine and Bill. Oh. They, they, uh, I can't remember their name. 
Uh, well, I remember the old the old name is shoot, you know, um, you know, you know, when as we growing up, there was something like some some kind of dumb kid there. Uh, we thought we dumb. I mean, um, Dan, Danny, yeah, anyway, two kids. Yeah, they had a boy and a girl. Yeah, what was the last name? That's why I can't remember. He married, he married... McCarthy, a, right? No, McCarthy was on the other side. They were... Uh, uh, they were right across the street from us. You, you were here, and they were there. Yeah. And you were here, and these people are there. Oh, that was a new house that was yeah. being put off. Yeah, they, they built that house the same time that... Uh, a little bit after we built mine, ours. Because I used to... Uh, put Charlie at the window, and he watched him, you know, work on it. Well, that was the house at which he put off some... Put off, yeah, yeah, right, right between, yeah. Anyway, that, 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 uh, they had a little girl, and uh, she wanted to work kind of a way to move into that clubhouse after you left. Oh, really? Move uh, in? Yeah, she wanted to have it, you know, for a... Clubhouse. A dollhouse for, for her own. <laughs> Well, he should have moved it over there. She didn't want it moved over there. She wanted it where it was. I mean, well, we could have. She used to come over every day and go down there. Really? Well, then why did you tear it down? I don't know. Maybe your father didn't want her to do it. I don't know. Is that it? Oh, no. I don't think so. I think he, I think he took it down after that. When I was thinking that... I kind of like, I kind of like the old clubhouse. Then one, I mean, you know, we didn't go in it or anything. And I guess Dad said it was just an eyesore, you know. Yeah. Probably one of those Dayton eyesores, you know, those things do in Dayton. But, uh, here, let me get another beer. One more beer. Oh, he's not here. Where's that one? There was one. There's a bottle. The beer. Yeah, it's, it's, it's in the refrigerator. Oh, okay. But, um... It's right on the bottom. It's always good to talk about the old times, because, you know, I never get... Sometimes I have a different perspective than you do. But you never know. You know, I don't have any more. Is Sandy in bed? Or is she on the side? Well, you got a lot more. You got the six-pack of that other backup version. Beer? Uh, is she in the bed or in the sofa? She's in the sofa. Oh, okay. Yo, you got lots of beer in here. We're not short beer, and then if that runs out, we got any I didn't say anything about being short of beer. I said I was short on talking to people about old times. Oh, really? Real old times, when I was little. Dorothy's gone, and she was the only one. Well, it's always good to talk about Your it. mother's gone, she was the only one. Is anyone mine? We can talk about old times. Oh, really? I guess Chuck is the closest one. He told me, he said, just talk to me. I remember a lot of it. He says he remembers mother. And he was uh, only four years old when she died. But he says he remembers her. I don't think I remembered when I was four. I, I, I remember a few things. I, was yeah. I remember, I remember work. I, I just remember this one definite thing. I'm pretty sure I remember. We were really young. We were in the bedroom, that back bedroom. I guess we were about one or two. I just remember talking to Jimmy in our baby language about the sun. We definitely had a discussion about the sun of some type. You know, yeah. Some crude discussion about what this was. We were always cooking in the baby, baby bin, and the sun would go over. And, yeah. and we were running, it was shining in. We were, well, of course, I had to ponder it for quite a while Sunday morning, or Saturday morning, because mother and daddy would stick till noon. You know, yeah. they, when it, and we, then all we get is, a, is just to be quiet. And we're sitting there and be quiet. Because we, of course, in those days, we woke up. 6 a.m. Yeah. Just the opposite. 
<laughs> so, I mean, we were, we were, I mean, I can appreciate that we needed to sleep in until around noon. But, you know, but we spent a heck of a long time in that baby pen. Every 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 morning, yeah. Because we didn't have any better any better to do. Yeah. And we were we we were sticking to the sun and wondering what this what the what the light was, you know, what the difference between night and day was. I think there's an advantage to that, you know, having someone early on to discuss some of the scientific problems, you know, from it's almost like early discovery. Because you know, instead of one, you remember that, huh? Yeah, because we had a really intense discussion about how, how old you think you were. One or two. Oh, well, you couldn't have been that young. No, I remember because we, I can see us clearly in the baby pen discussing it and talking to Jimmy, and you know, we 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 didn't have to talk a lot to get the ideas across. I don't think when you were one or two, your mother slept until noon. I'll tell you that. I know she didn't. But it's only then. Even on Sunday, I don't think she did, no. But we liked the day. We wanted to get outside. And I remember we were just fretting about being in the baby pen, or, you know, when the sun was out. So well, I, you, you didn't take, you didn't stay in there very long. Both you and Jimmy managed to crawl out of there. Do you remember that? <laughs> Your mother said we kicked it all apart. Johnny, yeah. Johnny did the same. No, Julie kicked the baby pin, her baby pin, all up. Johnny was tore it. Johnny rattled it. He shook it. Yeah. And he saw some weak spot there, and he just figured he didn't want to expend a lot of energy in, or make a hazardous condition. But he figured if he tore it up, yeah. he, he'd get out of there. Well, you know what I remember about Johnny and Julie uh, real clearly, and that is the fact you remember that the kitchen that went to the breezeway. There was a step down there from the kitchen to the breezeway. Johnny always, when he started to walk or even before, he'd, wa he'd watch that and he'd go down real carefully. <laughs> and Julie, wham, you know. Yeah, she, she <laughs> might care about that. Yeah. And then she slammed into the. Yeah. Although I don't think she tripped very much. Yeah, Johnny always said, Oop, uh oh. Yeah. You know, very good area in the floor. Yeah. You know, study, careful, go yeah. over it very carefully. Where Julie just charged across it. And remember, Johnny was afraid of the water. And Julie loved it. Yeah. I know. Julie, that's why Julie was, a, I think we went back and forth between Johnny. Johnny was, a, Johnny was a favorite person. You know, I mean, you know what I mean. It's just more fun to be with. And then Johnny got cautious. And meanwhile, Julie, Julie, uh, went up in the carelessness, and then Julie was a lot of fun to be with, because she was so so vivacious yeah. and so mm -hmm. full of life, and yeah. she was so happy, until, I mean, unless you're in between snits. But, and then, and then Julie got a little unreasonable. It's so hard to get, so, so many snits and hard to get along with, that I sort of joke with John. I, I think, unfortunately, we joke around a lot. I mean, I joke around a lot. I joke around a lot. <coughs> I still do, but joke around with Johnny about Julie and her snits. I don't know if that's good or bad, but it's just the way it was. And probably didn't hurt anybody. You know, but we, we tend to exaggerate this sort of the differences. You know, like everybody has some, about 90% of the personality is the same, and then there's a 10% that makes them unique, and we exaggerate that 10%. Yeah. Johnny still does that. I guess I do too. But it was. They were different, aren't they? But you think they were different too? Oh, yeah. When were they different? Johnny and Julie? To me, always. Uh, Julie was always, even when she was little, she was more withdrawn than Johnny. If you remember, she wouldn't go to everybody. Well, I, I, Johnny would go to anybody, you know. Johnny was a really happy little boy. Yeah. And I don't think Julie ever was. Yeah. Don't you? That's what Julie remembers. Uh huh? That's what Julie thinks. I thought Julie was Julie was happy and then she got but then she Oh, I don't, I don't mean she was unhappy. But she just didn't, uh, 
She just wasn't as outgoing as Johnny. Why is that? Well, I don't know, but a lot of children are like that. You know, as some children, I remember that, because some children will not go to anybody for a while but their mother or their father. The children right now? Uh, no. Uh, she'd go to other people, but in, she wouldn't. Johnny would, was friendly with everybody. You know, he, he just, no matter who it was. Don't you remember that? Yeah, I'm trying to tip her. I can't quite remember it. Don't quite, I don't quite, yeah, yeah, that's what you think. I think it's consistent with my view of him. No, I can remember. I think Johnny was there one time. Um, I, I don't know where you and Sandy were. You've gone somewhere and you brought Johnny uh, there, to, you know, to, for uh, Mary and Toby to take care of him. And, uh, but Johnny would go with me no matter you know what. Julie never would. Oh, really? Uh-uh. Who's that? Did she have a snit? Uh, no, but she just didn't, uh, I, I don't know what it was. I, I didn't understand it because I think she was the first child that had ever been that way towards me. But, um, well, Moose said she had, he had trouble with her once. Uh, she threw a fit in the Yeah, middle. oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, she used to get upset because uh, Preston took uh, Johnny, uh, you know, over and they, they did things together. And Sandy told me that that upset Julie because she wanted to do it too. So Preston did it and Julie, she was all right at first. I remember that. And the president had to call Sandy. She was over at her mother's. You know, come and get her. No, it is about Julie. She, she, Julie, Julie was always real, you know, indecisive. And, well, she didn't have a positive self image. It was just that simple to me. Her self image was low. Well, what made her throw things and, and, and get into this? Now, now, Sandy's mother told me, Pat told me, that she did that when she was down there this last time. You know, because she wouldn't let her go out with them. this boy. What boy? The, 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 the man that... Uh, oh, the jerk. Yeah. Jerk, the jerk. Well... Well, that yeah, is. So she apparently is still doing that, isn't she? No, she moved in with Joe the Jerk. No, but I mean she. Uh, yeah, she did it. Well, we told her, but like, if you still feel that way when you're 18, go on. You know, because we couldn't just we couldn't just lock her up forever. We figured whatever it is, get it out of her get it out of her system. Yeah. But uh, you know, no way that we like, weren't gonna. Julie's Julie. Not only did she make some kind of, you know, her decisions were good or bad, but in this case bad, but no matter what her decision was, she wouldn't change it or nothing, you know, so. Well, well, Johnny, what caused her to do those things? Do, do you know? Now, what got her so upset that she, uh, you know, I think Sandy told him she had allergies. Well, I think allergies. I do think allergies, and Julie was always sort of a little bit, you know, had a, she wasn't as healthy as John. You know, Johnny could go out and do things and, and get, you know, either emotional, well, Johnny was emotional, actually, Johnny could get hurt emotionally, someone would shoot him out, you know, scream yeah, at him. Yeah. But he, he at first left off, by the way, there's a guy, a friend of John's, Chris, who everybody's down on now because he's trying to draw some kind of wedge between her and Gwen. Uh -huh. Chris is the one I credit. Johnny used to be emotionally sort of uh, weak, but he had a good sense of humor, but it was mostly for self-defense mechanism. Chris is the one who really brought out his sense of humor. Who's Chris? Uh, some of the boyfriend of his. Uh -huh. you know, the Boy Scout friend. You know, he, he, for the past five years, 
Chris brought out the true sense of Johnny's ability to have a good sense of humor just to pur just for that purpose. You know, not to, as a defense mechanism. Before that, it started out as a defense mechanism. But <clears throat> as far as Julie, you know, I don't know why why she had those problems. I mean, but you know, you know, one thing is they started out so different. And and Johnny made fun of Julie, and I guess I made fun of Julie a little bit. You know. Johnny and me both, you know, but we made fun of everybody. We made fun of Sandy, they made fun of me, we made fun of Johnny. Everybody sort of poked, you know, you know, as we were, Jimmy actually is the number one prime baiter, as it were. Mother called, my mother would remember coming out to the breezeway. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Jimmy would stir things up. You know, if he saw something, he'd, he'd poke at it. And, you know, the fire, if the, if the fire was almost out, he'd poke at the smoldering timbers till something erupted. You know, trying to get everybody worked out. <laughs> so mother called Jimmy a baiter. I remember she was she had a few drinks and she said, You're a baiter. I never heard her say that. And she But Jimmy Jimmy was actually the best baiter. He he, he stopped doing it. But you know, we're all sort of like that. And we see a little weak spot in something. We we wanna we wanna develop that and get it see what see what's behind it. No, I didn't. I never do that. No, you don't do that. I no, no, never, you're not. Never do no, you're not a baiter. Me and Jimmy are the prime baiters. But unfortunately, Johnny and Julie picked it up for me. But Johnny picked it up better than Julie. Julie's not a baiter, but Johnny is. <coughs> Johnny will dig it out. Johnny will. And we have a joke, a private joke, or a little. <coughs> you know, that's how you develop these characters. Floyd and Grin, the, the the Boy Scout characters in Green. And it's, you know, the guy, he got this guy, I mean, that's baiting, sort of. Yeah. His Boy Scout teacher was, a Boy Scout dancer was a little strange, and, and he got this whole language and whole huge comic strip and whole the big production about Floyd and Grin, or Glenn, his name is, but you call him Grin, because Floyd can't pronounce Grin's name right, Glenn's name right. You know, so he got a voice for him and everything. <laughs> and, you know, I mean, you can take it as baiting or, it's a good, or you can take it as a good sense of humor. And I think I think Chris actually brought Johnny from being a baiter in a sort of a in a protect a self protective mode in, in a sense of humor to being a true just a funny person enjoying to laugh for its own sake. But Johnny was always real serious. He didn't laugh a lot, but he does with me. And so I always like to talk with Johnny, laugh and joke, and whoever whatever whatever it was was funny. We we. Blow it up, you know. So, mm -hmm. and Julie was always funny, and she's always doing something. Yeah. You know, like, like. Uh, <laughs> I remember one time I got on a video camera. One time I remember Julie was. I said Julie was saying, "Watch this," you know. I remember coming in with video camera, and she's jumping rope, and the rope got caught on something in the lamp, and Julie got frustrated. She tried it again, it got caught in the same thing, and she said, "Darn that rope!" And then Julie finally, after about the third time, threw the rope on the floor and threw herself in bed and started crying. Yeah. And then I take a picture of that there there it is that desk with rope. And I started talking about the rope being the problem, you know, but you know, and made a big deal of that. And then Julie got mad at me and threw threw a bunch of things at me and I had to leave the room. <laughs> but you know, the thing is is I would just I would just it just marvel me to see what frustrates the little kids. You know, and, and Well I can kind of understand that. You know, they uh I don't know. To them, I guess it wasn't a yeah, joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They took it seriously. But yeah, their, their feelings are hurt awfully easily. But Johnny, I guess because Johnny was such a good baiter, and he's even, uh, by the way, he surpassed me. Johnny, Johnny's sense of humor surpasses me. I mean, oh, Johnny. Yeah. I mean, you know, because everybody, like Glenn's Glenn family, everybody thinks Johnny's a real wizard. He can take anything and turn it around. You know, and see if you hear something and slips it around, tur turns 180 degrees and slides it in there, and it's just like, it's funny. <laughs> he is he is probably, he has a rare sense of humor and very funny. I mean, I'm sure he got it. It's an outgrowth of what we did when we were all of his life. Yeah, Johnny, they probably will, they'll probably stand him in good stead yeah, in that business, I think. You know? Johnny's quick. You know, he's quicker yeah, than I am. Yeah. He's funnier than I ever was. And he does it, and he's even doing it in a nicer way now. But 
He's he's always it's always fun to see Johnny because I could bring up anything. We could bring up literally anything like that notebook, anything, and it's, we could make it. We could talk about it for an hour about this, mm -hmm. and make jokes about it, and have a good time. Mm -hmm. Julie was never like that. I mean, you know, if we if we weren't picked on Julie. We're just trying to have a, you know, be in a humorous situation. Because I think life is basically just funny. It's, it's not really serious. I mean, I'm talking about Mrs. Showerker about the tickets I'm getting. I mean, it's a joke, you know, sort of. You get a ticket for nothing. You know, please, we know they just sit around and give people tickets. I need a bank, it's, a time has gone by, I need a hundred dollars. Everybody's speeding. Nobody goes to speed limit, but whatever the speed limit in is everybody's going five minutes faster, or five miles per hour, ten miles an hour faster. They just arbitrarily pick somebody up and give them a speeding ticket. It's a joke. And nothing to do with traffic safety, nothing to do with public safety, nothing to do with accidents, nothing to do with anything. Mm -hmm. Just simply illegal highway robbery. And well, so, you're breaking the law, for one thing. I know, but the, law, the problem is it doesn't, the law is just arbitrary. Mm -hmm. They just set the speed limit low, Everybody goes faster, and the police give everybody a hundred dollars. It's fine, except that the thing is, is, is since everybody's speeding, they pick one guy out, and give him a hundred dollar ticket. It's fine for everybody else, but somebody yeah. somebody ends up with a hundred dollar ticket. It's not then, then it quits being a joke. Yeah. And then the insurance company raises insurance rates, and of course they <laughs> and they like that because they know it's a joke, but it's an excuse. To raise about a certain population. You know what it is, Johnny, it's like they say. It's a vicious cycle. One thing leads to another. Well, I mean, since it doesn't hurt anything, the insurance company no, they just use it as a means to say, well, you got a ticket. So what? You know, yeah. We're raising you. Now, to get back to Julie, yeah. I wonder if she has those um, fits or whatever you call them with him. She probably not because she didn't have them in school. She only had, she saved them up for home, mostly for Sandy. But, you know, I don't think she probably has them with him. And if she does, he's too stupid to know anything. He yeah. is an idiot. The guy's an idiot. He's a certified, bona fide, uh, you know, idiot. So she could have, she could have the fits or not have the fits with him. I don't I think wonder, she does. I wonder how. She got attracted to him in the first place. Did she meet him in school? No, she met him when he tried to run her down with her truck. You oh. know, it's the first part of I know. Oh. Is, you know, we didn't know who he was, and then he tried to run over. He tried to run over Julie, Johnny, and, and Sandy in the parking lot. Next thing you know, he bashed out Johnny's windshield and tore up her house. Why? Why in the world, after he did all these things, would she? Uh, and so I said, I said, look, Julie, why don't you go, why don't you pick the, why don't you, there's probably a scummier person. If you go to the, if you go downtown, go to the jails, you might even find somebody more stupid. But, you know, you have to work at it, because this guy's a bona fide idiot. Flunk, the high school flunky, dropout, drug addict, vicious, threatens people, to kill, threatens to kill all of his neighbors, drives his car, gets an accident, get in an accident with his car about once a week, can't learn anything. He's totally dysfunctional. But Julie feels sorry for him among other things. That's no reason to fall in love with somebody. He's a pathetic person. Hmm. He's a pathetic idiot. He has no ability to function. He can't function in society. I mean, Julie could not get a, a less functional person. Did you tell Helen about this? Uh, about jo about jo Julie and Joe's jo jo Yeah, sort of. Okay. I, I didn't go. I, didn't. I, I hadn't mentioned it to her at all. I just, um, I figured if you wanted her to know, you'd tell her yourself. Oh, I don't care. Okay. You know, I don't care. I've never been one to care whether anybody cares what I care or not. You know, you know who I am. Well, I know it doesn't make any difference. I I mean, I, I just, you know, it just, it just, I don't know what I've been. Life is short. It's another episode. It's Julie's life. Julie's. Julie will maybe get better, maybe she'll get worse, and maybe she'll just be the same. I mean, I can't, I can't imagine that it would be, this is superior to her meeting a reasonable person that she could go around and throw out, get in fights with and break up with. I mean, it would have an irreasonable person for her to get in worse fights with and break up with. I mean, the ultimate result is the same. Yeah. I mean, it's, 
it's just a waste of her time. But maybe she'll learn something. Maybe she'll learn that what a true idiot is. How it is to, what it is to really run around with an absolute pure and simple idiot. I mean, the thing is, the only thing is, is he's unequivocal. I mean, you know, if somebody was, if he was halfway reasonable, there might be a little bit of back and forth and squabble and, you know, see the good sides and bad sides. He doesn't have no good sides. He's an idiot. He's and not like he's, not like I think he's an idiot. Everybody thinks he's an idiot. His parents think he's an idiot. And they want Julia to run around. I've heard him say something like, you know, that, you know, this is what Jimmy says. Of course, I don't know what he's saying that Michael Julia says. Jimmy says, her mother says, I got, I, we got a big thing going this year. Joe, or Joe, Joey, Finally, he's going around the girl and you know, bought her daughter, her, her dad, is a rich doctor. I'm not rich, for one thing. But anyway, the thing is, is they think that they think that somehow I'm going to do something. I told you that she's on her totally on her own forever, mm -hmm. as far as I'm concerned. I'm not going to I'm not going to do anything on this one. We tried. I mean, we put her through counseling, everything. Two years we 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 tried to convince her this is guy's an idiot, and she doesn't listen to us at all. So I said, fine, just go learn on your own. You, you, if we can't teach you, there's only one way for you to learn. What did she say when you told her then? She wants it. That's what she wants. Yeah, you're not going to teach me. You know, she agreed. You can't do anything to stop me. She's stubborn. She's real stubborn. You know, you know about Julie. She's as stubborn as it can be. Yeah. She's not, she's, she thinks it, and I think stubbornness in Julie's case is to some extent She's going to get what she wants no matter what. She's always been like that. Mm -hmm. She'll scream when she was one or two years old. We were in Atlantic City. And she screamed from the morning to night and well into the night for something. I don't know what even. But, you know, it wasn't anything that we won't get. Not, it's not for walking on the beach, going to the park, going out to eat, doing anything. I don't yeah. know what it was. It was something that we didn't want her to do, you know, that was dangerous. And she screamed all day, all day and all night. She would, she would, she wouldn't do it. She would never. She gave up everything to for nothing. Gave up all the fun they could have had. I mean, I we just left her. We left her screaming in the room because Johnny and Julie and I went. I mean, Johnny and Johnny and Sandy and I went out and did what we were going to do. We're not going to let Julie. By then, even when she was two, we figured out well, we're not going to let Julie ruin everything. In Mexico City, I took her. I took her on my conferences, and there was something like the Rio, the River Wild. It was actually called the Wild River, Rio. But anyway, and that was a movie. So I remember going there in the morning. Took Julie with me in the morning. It was a pretty nice place. We stayed at. Took her there in the morning, and I came out of my conference. I was given. I told Julie, "Here's a movie theater here. I was right here in the room next to it. I mean, it was a little, little square, a small square, and a shopping center. And I was in this room." And the movie was here. So Julie, why don't you go in there and watch a movie? It's in Spanish, so you might learn something. You know, and it had subtitles or whatever. I think it had subtitles. But, you know, in any event, Julie was taking Spanish, and I figured it'd be good for her to watch this, you know, at least she knew the movie and, you know, just to watch it. Something to do other than walk around the conference. And I came out, and Julie was rolling on the floor, knocking posters over and everything else. I mean, Julie just has a, a tendency to just, be unruly, and she won't stop. She just won't stop. Well, apparently she, uh, if she's working, you can't do that at work. No, yeah. no, the thing, the good news, the good news is ever since Julie moved down, moved in with this idiot, the idiot can't get up in the morning to go to work. You know, he's got a job. Because, you know, Julie was the only one who had a job there. I mean, mother's, her mother's an alcoholic. I mean, mother's an alcoholic. Uh, her dad is an idiot. Her, I mean, of course, her and her, and her boyfriend's a, a total idiot. And so Julie was only Julie went from being like the weak member of our family, you know, the the tantrum yeah, throwing. Yeah, she's a strong member. <laughs> to to the Einstein, the total organization, from being the least decisive to the most decisive of their family. And so, you know, basically, he, they, Julie got him a job, she's got a job, she's got to go to work every day, she's going to go to college, something that he can't do. I mean, she's actually, maybe that's it. Maybe she just feels, from going, she was always getting looked down, I mean, we didn't really look down on her, you know, we, we never looked down on her, but, you know, we made jokes about it, but maybe, maybe if it's a real thing, it's not a joke, but not a bad joke. 
she went from being the least, uh, you know, the, the, the least likely to succeed amongst her, Johnny, to the most likely to succeed of everybody in the whole family. But I, well, don't, I don't think that's true because she made the, the honor roll. No, she was very, Julie's always smart. Yeah. No, as far as being smart, Julie's smarter, Julie, Johnny has a better logical ability. You know, you can see that. I mean, Johnny's yeah. wittier and smarter and a lot more logical in the real world. But as far as book learning, you know, Johnny can't spell his name. Well, know? that's because of his dyslexia. Yeah. Yeah, so, but, um, uh, so Julie, Julie definitely is, is, is... The fact that she is determined to go to school, uh, it makes me feel good, you know. Well, uh, yeah, we wanted that. Yeah, I, I, I think that's... And we even prevented her, or, you know, she was going to school the first term, but I figured she's moved, she was bound to determined to move out on November 7th, 1997 when she was 18. Yeah. And so I figured, well, there's no sense in going to school this year. You might as well just go to work full time, save your money. If you move out, start to get ready. January 5th will be around soon enough. And go, you can start then. Yeah. And it's, that's what she's going to do on Monday. She's going to start to go to school. Yeah. And well, go good. yeah. And she, she, it made her more determined than ever, maybe because she's around total idiots, of the importance of education. I've always emphasized that. Yeah. I've always emphasized that ever since they were one year old, the only thing that's important is your brain and, and, and getting things, <coughs> getting knowledge. <coughs> and, you know, so she's heard that enough times and she probably believes it. And, you know, I think that she's going to do well. But eventually she's going to, uh, for the life of me, I don't know what it is about this jerk. Other than, you know, Beverly got trapped in a thing like this. I remember. I don't know if you remember, but you probably know more about it. Helen telling Beverly when I remember long, 20 years ago when when Lupus, you know, we call him Joe. With, uh, Joe with Lupus came around. Joe plus Skoda. He said, and I remember it, he. Oh, uh, you remember that? And, and then, and then, <laughs> oh, they were opposed to that marriage. And then Joe left. Ah, I got Joe by Joe. It's Keith Sandor. Beverly. Uh -huh. The guy's got lupus. I mean, he's just going to end up in the hospital and oh, die. Yeah. Oh, die yeah. in maybe 15, 20 years, and you're going to be a widow. And then, yeah. And you want that? And, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh, I remember that. And he, but do you know what the strange thing is about it? Both Helen and Elwood really loved Joe. Okay. It, not, for, it didn't take too long. You know. <laughs> I mean, they posed. But, but he wasn't unreasonable. He just had. No, Joe was a real lovable person. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. He, uh, everybody liked Joe. I never got to know Joe. Yeah, oh, he was. He, uh, your mother, I know your mother told me one time, she said, you know, he really, uh, I can see how Bev felt about him. I know he thought Bev was, she was really, he really loved her. Yeah, it was, it was a good marriage, even in spite of the fact that There's one thing about it, you know, they really, they made up their minds, I guess, in the beginning, that they were going to enjoy what they could while they could. And they went everywhere. I know Joe, Joe told Preston one time that he said, we never saved any money uh, because we figured we'd spend it and have fun. And that's what they did. You know, Beverly said they wanted to go to Croatia. Oh, he did. Uh -huh. Yeah, but, but when they, when he was well, and they had, the first he didn't have money, second he, second they had money, but he was, and he was well, but then there was a war. Yeah. Know, about 19, about five or six years ago, 19, yeah. 1992 or so. Yeah. 1991 or two. And then, and he, you know, he was, the Russians were in charge, so, of the Serbs, so, you know, they were, he was afraid to get in there, and then they went, he couldn't get out, you know. Yeah. Because he was Croatian, you know, and that was kind of the underdog, and and uh, and then and then finally he got sick. Yeah, I did, I hadn't uh, I didn't know that, but you know he was um, 
you know, his father brought him over here, and he tried to keep in touch with his mother, and she never answered any of his letters. In other words, and his father was not a real good father either. So, um, I think Joe kind of adopted Helen and Elwood. And uh, they really got real fond of him. Now, now, Helen and Elwood opposed Carolyn's marriage, too. I know. Yeah, oh, I remember that. <laughs> she was marrying this Quaker in Kansas. That's after that guy, whoever his name was, Joe or you remember that guy? Who? Some, some, some guy looked more reasonable, actually, I gotta say, than this other guy. Uh, the Quaker. Uh, I don't know who, I don't know his name. You mean Carolyn? Yeah. Oh, no, I didn't know that. There was a guy she was going with. He really did look like a, you know, really sharp guy. Yeah. Reasonable guy, kind of a regular guy. Kind of like a regular, outgoing guy. And then Joel with Carolyn. And then she, she, within six months, she went for the bottom of the girl. Well, I mean, you know, she went for the Quaker. Yeah. <laughs> you know, last one. Don't you remember that guy's name? No, I don't remember. Last was the man she married. No, before, I, before last or something. I, didn't, I never heard about that. But I know that... She was on the rebound. Oh, was that it? Yeah. Oh. I, I didn't know that... Um, I, I did know that Helen, I don't know whether Elwood was against Les or not, but Helen was. Well, I think Elwood was too, because um, I remember him saying, Elwood would always said the logical stuff, I mean, you know, that this another mismatch. Yeah. I mean, everything's a bit of a mismatch, and you get by with it. Like Johnny and Gwen are a mismatch, I mean, not they're getting married, that's just the first person you have to fall in love with. And Julie, but Julie and Joe are total mismatch. You know, I mean, IQ-wise, they're just miles Well, the thing about it is, Johnny, maybe nothing will ever come of either of it. Oh, I know. No, that's Johnny's first, you yeah. know. That's right, that's bound to Yeah, true. yeah. Because they live apart. And, and with Julie, she may come to her senses. I oh, I think that's right. I think Julie... I, I think she will. One thing, Julie is getting stronger. She's yeah. getting more determined. She's keeping her job, she's getting up, she has yeah. to, she's on her own. That's it, so that's the good part of it. Yeah. yeah. So I and think it doesn't seem to have, when I talk to her, it doesn't appear to be any deleterious facts. Julie's still Julie, if anything, she's more. Yeah. She's better, you know. And I think the hanging around a bunch of total goofballs and being on her own, because she, she didn't get one I owed her. I mean, we asked her over the house as much as possible, but she didn't get any support from us at all. And this relationship has zero support. In fact, we tell her every time that you know she should, any time she wants to stop this, stop this, this would be fine with us. Yeah. And she could we we support her to go go somewhere else if she doesn't want to live in Birmingham. She can live in Paris as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. You know, she can do whatever she wants other than hang around with this total idiot and his family. Mm -hmm. And uh, she actually takes that. She actually takes that pretty well. She doesn't storm out of the house when you say it. Mm -hmm. So, I think that I think eventually, I mean it's obvious. Eventually, she's gonna it's gonna lead to a breakup, and Julie's not gonna be heartbroken over it. I don't know what what I mean. I don't think. I can't imagine being, you know, this is gonna leave no scars on her. Mm -hmm. I mean, emotional scars. I mean, I don't think, because you know, that she's gonna see this is bizarre. Because they argue, you can hear them on the phone. You know, it's, it's stuff like Joe would say something like, you know, like a, she said, Joe, Joe, are you down there? And, you know, they talk fine. They just don't talk right. Mm -hmm. she, she slurs her words because she's always drunk. And she says, shut up, mother, just shut up. I don't want to hear from you. It's always an argument. I mean, Julie must know that it's chaos, chaos and total stupidity. Yeah. I don't know how Julie, Julie. No, I didn't understand that either. You know, it doesn't fit my picture of her at all. No, Julie, Julie, I mean, unless you feel somehow superior in that situation setting. Mm -hmm. And maybe she needs to be. You know, maybe she needs to feel like she's the best person around. Maybe her ego. She always had a low self-esteem. And the only thing I think of is being with a bunch of total idiots. Her self-esteem is getting better. 
and you know, then she acts better. She acts better than she was, than she did before. You know, because well, you know, Johnny, maybe in the long run, you know, it'll work out all right. Because when she was in our house, she had me. You know, who's not not great, but somebody, jo Sandy, who's not great, but somebody, Johnny, who's you know, who's whiz, kind of a whiz bam and everything. Then Julie, who's, you know, so she was always, I think, maybe felt a little inferior. She was superior in some things, determination mostly, but, you, you know. know. she always idolized Johnny. Remember, she did. She used to she still him likes, around, huh? She still likes Johnny. Yeah, yeah. But the thing is, is she had to be her own person, and she had to be, feel self-confident. And, you know, being around a bunch of total idiots, I mean, you can't help but feel like she's, She's she's pretty good, so that might be what she's getting out yeah, of. Yeah, well, that's like I said. All things work together for good. Yeah, you never know. Yeah. You just it's just can't hard to figure out. Like, I mean, you can't figure it out. I mean, you'd like to calculate everything. Like I'm more of a calculating mood, but you know now, but you know, you just can't. I just say do it. Just just get off the dime anyway. You know, it's better than sitting around just wondering what's going to happen. That's why we said, go. You know, this is what it's going to take, do it. You know, I'll tell you what, somebody told me that a long time ago. They what? said, if you don't know what to do, make up your mind to do it, whether it's right or wrong. Yeah, I mean, Because it's better than indecision. Worst thing to do is just sit around and wonder if you wonder or not. You should do it or not do it, and yeah. don't do anything. I mean, well, as you know, I am a.